This video is made with the sponsorship of Ecrotech New Zealand, one source for all your beekeeping requirements. Hello, Trev here from Trev's Bees on Facebook and YouTube. Got a new toy that arrived the other day that I've had a bit of play with. This is a Lega wax melter. Uh, 25 litre capacity and probably a bit more than what most beginners would want to use but this is aimed more at the semi-commercial when it arrived it arrived with a fancy instruction book it's got uh, in French and in English and the whole instruction amounts to Four photographs showing the thermostat, the tap, the filler hole, and the stand. Apart from that, they've killed the tree for no reason at all. So, this video is to show how to use this. You've seen my other video of the solar wax melter. There's still a place for that, but when you're generating as much wax as I am in conjunction with my friend who's a, a packer, um, we needed more than that. So I'm going to explain how this all works. When it arrives, it just comes in a box and there's some minor assembly are required. Even the knob's not put on the, the lid. So you have to put this tap on here and there's two taps underneath here that need to go on and this thermostat unit and um, power unit heating unit needs to be put into place apart from that it's relatively easy there's a jacket around here um, which you fill with water it takes around about 20 litres I didn't uh, check it and it takes uh, about three hours to heat it to bring it up to heat so it's not a fast process but wax melting is tends to be slow I set the thermostat on about 85 degrees wax melts at uh, 70 degrees so that just gives a little bit extra heat I can check with my little laser gun and I can find that that wax melt wax in there currently is a sitting at 84 degrees so some of the things that I have got and made adapted to to get it all up to scratch so we'll just have a quick look here this is the type of wax that you're going to have at home as the hobbyist whatever you collect through the year you would need to collect about four buckets of this to make it worth heating this up and we also have this wax which comes out of the wax press at the packing unit this container of 25 litres will hold two of these buckets of wax so that's a lot of wax Two of those buckets of wax. Will produce about that much wax. That there is about 12, 13 kilos of wax. So. That's a pretty big. A uh, lot of wax. So you need to have a, a fair stockpile of wax on hand to make it worthwhile firing this up I went up to Bunnings and I bought some cheap buckets these have handles on them like this these are a dollar each so if they get broken who cares 
So these are my wax mold. Okay. Uh, now I use a little strainer like this. You can get several uses out of it um, to actually strain any of the dross that comes out of the the unit um, when it goes into the bucket. We'll show you how that all works shortly. And these, I buy these strainers, Hayden strainers, paint strainers, and buy them from most of the paint shops. These ones are to fit uh, 10 litre containers, so that's this size. And these, and they come uh, as a dozen in a pack, 12. These come with 25 in a pack, and these ones are designed to fit a four litre container. And I put those on here. And that collects the honey out of, that get, comes out of the wax. We'll explain that as we get further on. This one, this bucket, an old paint bucket, is uh, here purely to collect the, uh, the dross that's in the bottom, all the casings and the dead bees and anything else that's in the wax, um, and that then gets all strained out. And this is tied on because it gets quite a bit of weight. Uh, weight. And that comes out like that. Quite yuck. I have a jug of boiling water here. Um, and I'll show you how and why I've got that later when we get to it. So I've had two buckets of wax in here and they've been uh, in the heater overnight. One of the things you need to be mindful of is bees. The smell of hot wax, they're around through the windows and into the shed here pretty rapidly. And once they start actually working, there'll be a lot more come in. That's part of beekeeping, isn't it? We, uh, we put up with the girls. Oh, and then I've got a, a little sieve uh, here that I can skim the stuff off the top and I'll put it into a plastic bag so I can um, throw that out later. So, first off, we have a little bit of stuff floating on the top. There's not much stuff on here, but we can just skim all this off. I like to make sure that everything is as clean as possible. And if I leave this sieve in here for a little few extra seconds I can actually melt most of that wax that's on there as, off as well but in the scheme of things there's not much wax getting lost there so that'll stay over there Um, yeah, we'll take that now we've got a little bit of a two-stage thing goes on here first off we can't see in there in amongst the wax there is honey and wax and other rubbish uh, pollen and um, and the dross But we don't know how much wax is in there, uh, honey is in there. And although the honey has been heated up to 90 degrees, or oh, 85, 90 degrees for quite a few hours, it tends to be cooked. That honey is still usable, but only for cooking. You can't really uh, use it for anything else. So if you know someone who does preserves or whatever, that honey is still good. So the first thing I do now, You need to have this on a stand because you don't want too much weight. Sometimes there'll be a little plug of wax in here and it takes a bit of while for the heat for that heat 
to allow that to come out. So we turn the tap on and just see if it comes out clear, clearish, it'll be wax. If it comes out dirty, it'll be honey. That there is honey. So there's no point, and this is going to, have to be my wax bucket, so there's no point in filling all that up. So now we need to go around to the other side. We know that at least that high. So around here, we've got another tap under here. In fact, we've got two taps under here. One tap is for draining the um, the water jacket, and the other tap is for draining the honey off. That's bloody clear as well. So with this one, because it's a straight up one, oh no, it's just starting to come. As you can see, this can be quite messy. You can see that dark colour, that is caramelised honey. Now we need to get another bucket. So there's about four litres of caramelised honey. The reason we're draining this honey out of here first is because we need to get it down to a level where we can get the wax out of the tap. So we'll just turn that off for now. See that? That's still got more honey in it. So we still haven't taken enough out yet. So we come around here now and we've checked it. There's still more honey in here so it's still up above this tap. What we've got to do is got to get the wax down. We have, uh, when you melt all this wax and honey, the honey being heavier than the wax will sink to the bottom and so will all the dross, all the rubbish. And the wax floats on top. It's that clean wax over there that we want. So we need to make sure that coming out of the tap is only wax out of this tap. So we've got to keep taking honey off until such time as the wax is, below, is down to the tap level. So more honey to come off. Okay, well that's the end of part one of the video for wax melting and the wax melter. Um, we'll see you around on part two. Cheers, thanks.